Hello, and welcome to Nameless Studio. I'm your host, Tyler. Today, we're going to continue working on our plywood encaustic piece. So why don't we just go ahead and get started today. Okay. So we're going to start today by continuing to add a lot of texture and sort of um, contrasting elements to the base that we put down in yesterday's video. Um, I am adding a very opposing sort of blue-green to this orange here, um, creating kind of a very uh, interesting dynamic between two vastly different but also very vibrant colors. So again, the uh, the Neo Color Pastel 2s are what I'm using to sort of just rub into the layer of encaustic medium that I put down in the previous video. These Neo Colors being water soluble, um, so I can just kind of put down the marks and then wash them back as little or as much as I need. Uh, more than anything else at this point, I am trying to fill all the little nooks and crannies and cracks and crevices that I left um, when firing that base layer. Because if you recall, I left a lot of uh, parts of that um, just just licked with fire more than anything else so that I still get a lot of grooves and bumps and dotting effects um, in the actual wax other than the nice smooth coat. So I'm able to sort of put a lot of uh, pigment and tonation into those marks um, as I am sort of brushing and rubbing and moving um, the Neo Color around. So that is what we're going to see through a lot of this process is me just sort of doing very, very light layers, just rubbing in texture. Sometimes it might not even, even look like I'm doing all that much, but um, there is some coming through. So I'd also like to take this moment to talk a little bit about the overall theme of this piece. Um, again, uh, using plywood instead of the normal um, encaustic board that I've been using in the past, um, partly because I have a lot of scrap plywood lying around, but also I just wanted to try something a little different. Um, the idea behind this is kind of um, playing off of the theme of um, found object art, but instead of using actual found object objects, um, kind of creating my own found object. Um, and I tend to have a great gravitation towards H.P. Lovecraft and kind of the stories of his and the idea and nature of sort of uh, a multiverse, dream worlds, um, and things like that. And in a lot of his stories, um, his characters tend to find these um, ancient sort of found objects that um, don't really equate to an ancient civilization like, say, the you know, Byzantian or, you know, the Romans or Greeks or Egyptian or anything like that there, they tend to be ancient otherworldly sort of, sort of, uh, objects. And so that's kind of what I'm trying to build here. Um, the object in theme that I'm technically trying to create more than anything else is, is actually a map. Um, it's kind of the, the thought and the idea that I'm trying to, trying to build um, as I'm working on this piece. The idea is that um, this is kind of a multi-dimensional map to a certain degree, a map to sort of soft spots in the world maybe that um, can bring you to, you know, the dream world or other other multiversal sort of scenarios, um, kind of like in some of Lovecraft's books like uh, um, Dreams in the Witch House, where the house itself is kind of a soft spot um, to transition into the dream world at points and things like that. Um, the the holes I have drilled in this in this piece um, to sort of be points of transition to other worlds or something. The idea is that this map itself is not a two-dimensional map, um, more of a three or maybe even four-dimensional map in certain ways. A map that maybe as humans we're not even meant or even can understand. So that's kind of the idea behind this is that overall I'm kind of building a found object, sort of um, ancient, sort of obtuse map in a certain way, is uh, the overall idea that I'm playing with while building this piece. So right now I'm taking an X-Acto knife and sort of pulling back um, some of that 
green neo color that I put down just so we can bring a little bit more of that orange back through adding just a lot of nice contrast um, in these areas as we as I build and move things around um, because as much as that green is a, is a nice uh, contrast everything we do want still a lot of that light tonation to, sh to kind of show through at the moment we don't want to get too heavy um, with sort of dark elements the overall balance of this piece wants to be in that orange lighter realm with with more of that uh, the darker tones feeling more like wear and tear on top of the actual map itself if you get my drift so that's why we're going to be pulling back quite a lot of what I'm putting down and also trying to sort of uh, wear it down and obscure it as much as possible as I'm doing. So there's a, there's a lot of just sort of rubbing and pushing and sort of wearing stuff down as I'm putting down marks just to make them feel as worn and old as possible as I move per layer. So there's a lot of warping of each layer in this piece. Um, just to get that sort of really torn sort of look. And now I'm going to do a little bit of fusion um, to this green, partly so that when we put down the next layer, it's not going to be affecting this one too much, um, but also because you can get some interesting effects once you have those sort of little holes and, and uh, divots sort of filled with pigmentation. Once you fuse them, they can shrink a little bit or cap or there can be some interesting movement that happens once you sort of fire that and let the wax itself sort of take a natural motion to it. Sometimes it can be a little unpredictable, um, but it's usually interesting if nothing else. So I just took the chance and went with it, um, and it worked out just fine. Adding just a couple extra color elements here, not much. I'm putting down just a little bit of this cadmium red here. Um, just to act as a little bit of a focal point, um, but not without drawing too much attention away from the overall aesthetic. And I'm going to be pulling back quite a bit of this red when we're all said and done. Um, in essence, I'm kind of making a quote-unquote like hot spot um, to a certain degree on one of these drilled holes is kind of the idea um, of, of why I'm putting this little spot here. It'll be really the, the only real tonation of red that you're seeing when you look at it quickly. Um, when we're all said and done, there will be some other um, red accents here and there, but much more obscured and worn that you'll have to look for in order to see them. Um, because as, as I said before, having having a single element of something on a piece uh, usually comes off looking a little strange or weird or out of place. Um, you always want at least a rule of two um, when coming to um, themes, textures, gestures, really anything that you put in your in your art pieces. You want to have it happen at least twice um, to make it feel like it's intentional rather than a mistake. So that's what we're seeing here is me just really wearing this down so we can have just a, a little bit of a, a focal point onto one of these, call them tunnels to the dream world maybe, um, and going from there. At this point, it's looking like a pretty interesting composition. We have a lot going on on the top half, so I'm going to start building out the bottom a little bit more so it's not just white and orange. So I'm adding with a very, very, very dry brush um, a little bit of gold um, just to kind of, one, bring in some texture, because when you dry brush with encaustics, you get very short and gruff marks that leaves a lot of texture um, and a lot of bumpiness. Um, works really well to get textural elements when you when you just sort of br dry brush um, the encaustic onto a board. Um, that way, it, it can it, you're not really moving much actual encaustic paint around because the paint is cool. Um, so it's really just texture, texture, texture. Um, so we're getting a little bit of that sort of yellow-orange tonation along with here to help wake up just sort of the base orange. Um, but overall, what that is doing is just adding a whole lot of texture to that layer that I just kind of fused a little bit with the blowtorch. And now we're going to pull it up back just a little bit um, in certain spots um, just so it kind of 
evens out the balance of how it looks. We don't want it to feel like, look like it's painted on. We want it to feel like it's, it's actually incorporated to the layers below it. Um, so we need to integrate that by, by sort of pulling it back just a little bit here and there. Um, but yeah, obscuring as much of that bright white as possible is kind of um, the idea that we're getting at for the bottom half of this and just adding in more and more texture, texture, texture is really what this piece is about. A whole lot of texture. But that white, like I said, this is supposed to be a more ancient piece. Um, so uh, the more and more we build this, the less and less that sort of bright white is going to come through, just little by little. So every, every step you take might seem like a little baby, but it's all building to uh, an overall composition. So now I'm just taking a paper towel and just rubbing everything back a bit. Like I said, every anything I can do to rough up the surface um, is going to be a good thing for this piece. Looking good. All right, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And to see more like this, subscribe to Nameless Studio. Um, to be honest, only about half of you are subscribed. So please subscribe to help support me and to allow me to give you more content. So until next time, I've been Tyler with Nameless Studio. Be seeing you.